What's going on guys? Today we are going to be looking at the top performing stocks from 2023. And while the S&P 500 is up a little over 24% so far this year, all the stocks on this list are going to be up over 140%. And not only will we look at the stock performance, but we will also take a look at their revenue and their EPS numbers over the last five years. And finally, we will discuss valuation of each of these stocks and where I think it could be headed over the next year. So if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. Let's start off this list with NVIDIA. NVIDIA has had an incredible year with the stock being up over 240%. And this massive run up comes on the back of very strong numbers. NVIDIA in the last couple of quarters has outperformed in a major way with their most recent quarter revenue growth coming in at 205% year over year. And NVIDIA has put up very strong revenue growth numbers over the last five years. We could see at the end of 2008, 18, they were bringing in around $12.4 billion in the trailing 12 month period. However, fast forward to today, and we can see that that number has grown all the way up to $44.8 billion. And their EPS numbers have followed a similar trajectory. We can see that their two most recent quarters have been phenomenal. Their second quarter of 2023, they brought in $2.48 in a single quarter of EPS. That is similar to what they brought in a year ago for the trailing 12 month EPS of $3 dollars and five cents. And if that isn't enough, in the third quarter, they achieved an EPS of three dollars and 71 cents. That is almost the same as their best trailing 12 month EPS that they achieved in 2022 of three dollars and 85 cents. However, now they are achieving that in a single quarter. And because of this outperformance, the valuation of Nvidia has dropped significantly. We could see that just a few months ago, they were trading around a 60 forward PE ratio. However, their PE has now dropped down to a around 25. Personally, I think Nvidia is almost priced to perfection because they have had very, very strong performance in 2023. There is no denying that. However, what investors are expecting over the next year or so is going to be even better performance from Nvidia. And if we see any faltering of their earnings, I think the stock could come down in a major way. So personally, Nvidia is not a buy right now for me. If I were to add some, it would be a very small position and look to get in heavier as the stock potentially falls if they show weakness in their earnings. The second stock we have up here is Meta Platforms, and they are up over 180% year to date. And even with this incredible run, they're still a little bit off of their all-time highs of around $380. We saw the stock fall in 2022 as they experienced a few quarters of negative revenue. However, over the last three quarters, they have gotten back to growth in terms of their top line, coming in at 2.5% growth year over year, then 11% growth year over year, and then finally finally 23% growth year over year in the most recent quarter. And over the last five years, Meta has seen incredible revenue growth, growing their revenue from $55.8 billion in 2018, all the way to $127 billion in 2023. However, EPS numbers haven't been as consistent. In 2021, they had a peak trailing 12 month EPS number of $14. However, that fell in a major way, bottoming out in March of 2023 at $8.07. However, they have recovered very nicely over the last couple of quarters and gotten it back up to $11.34. However, on a quarterly basis, they have just had their best quarter ever, bringing in $4.39 of EPS, which is better than any number they achieved in 2020 and 2021, with their highest previous quarter being $3.87. And even now, after the stock has ran up in a major way, they're still trading similar to where they were in March of this year, with their PE ratio sitting around a 21, which compares very closely to the 21 that we were seeing back in March. Personally, I don't think Meta is actually undervalued in a significant way like it was a year ago when they were trading around a 10 forward P ratio, but I still think it's relatively a good deal. The next stock we have up here is Uber, and Uber is up a little over 140% year to date. And Uber has seen very strong top line growth over the last couple of years, with them sitting around $12.8 billion in the middle of 2021 and growing their revenue all the way up to 35 $5.9 billion by the third quarter of 2023. However, top line growth does appear to be slowing down with them growing at 14% a quarter ago and 11% in the most recent quarter. And Uber has been very inconsistent in terms of their profitability over the last few years. However, three of the last four quarters have been profitable with them coming in at 33 cents, then negative 8 cents, a positive 18 cents, and then a positive 10 cents. And with these positive quarters of EPS, that has brought their trailing 12 month EPS number to 
53 cents, the first time it has been positive since 2018 when it hit $2.08. With Uber just starting to hit profitability, they don't really have much of a PE ratio right now, so in my opinion, Uber is more of a wait and see how they perform over the next year. If they really start driving towards profitability and maintaining a profitable state, I think that could make Uber interesting over the next couple of years. The next stock we have up here is Palantir, and Palantir is up a little over 170% year to date. And in terms of revenue, we can see that Palantir has a very solid uptrend with their current revenue sitting around $2.1 billion. However, the revenue growth has slowed in a major way. A year ago, they were sitting around 30 to 25% growth year over year. However, that number has dropped down to around 16% year over year growth. And a lot of hype around Palantir has come around their EPS. We can see that over the last few quarters, they have finally hit profitability and they have been consistently profitable over the last four quarters, coming in at two cents, one cent, one cent, and then the most recent quarter, three cents. And Palantir CEO Alex Karp has made a commitment to keep the company profitable. Right now, they're sitting at a forward P ratio of 59.17. However, I'd like to see Palantir over the next year achieve EPS numbers in the range of 20 to 30 cents of positive EPS. That'll give me a lot more confidence that Palantir will remain profitable into the future. For me, Palantir currently isn't a buy. I want to see how the stock performs over the next year and see if they can achieve profitability at a higher rate. I think this is something they can do. They just need to expand their commercial customer base. The next stock we have up here is Royal Caribbean Cruises, and they are up over 160% year to date. And with cruises being shut down in 2020 and a little into 2021, Royal Caribbean suffered a lot. We could see that they bottomed out at a revenue of around $0.09 billion in 2021. However, they have rebounded very, very nicely with their current revenue coming in at $13.1 billion, which is actually higher than what we saw in 2019 when they brought in around $10.9 billion. And EPS has taken a little bit longer to respond. We could see that over the last few quarters, they have started to get back to profitability with negative 19 cents, then a dollar and 70 cents of positive EPS. And in their most recent quarter, they brought in $3.65. And over the course of the next year, I would kind of expect Royal Caribbean Cruises to get back to similar EPS numbers that we saw in 2019 of around $8 to $9 of EPS. And right now, Royal Caribbean is sitting around a 14 forward P ratio, which in my opinion is probably a fair value for Royal Caribbean. I think that with the cyclicality that they have in their business, they don't tend to trade at very high PE ratios. In my opinion, Royal Caribbean is not a buy right now. They're sitting at levels that are very similar to their all-time highs that they achieved back in 2019. So I think that there's a lot more risk to the downside than there is potential upside in this stock. Another cruise line that has performed very well over the last year is Carnival. They are up almost 140% year to date. And Carnival's revenue follows a very similar trend to Royal Caribbean's revenue. We could see that it dropped off in a major way. However, it has rebounded very nicely over the last couple of years, currently sitting at $20 billion. However, this is still down from the numbers that they saw in 2019, where they were sitting around around $21 billion. And Carnival is just starting to get back to profitability with their most recent quarter coming in at positive 79 cents. However, their trailing 12 month EPS is still negative, sitting at negative $1.32. And in terms of valuation, Carnival is trading at a higher forward P ratio than Royal Caribbean, currently sitting at a forward P of 18.21. And if you just look at Carnival Cruises stock price, as well as some of their revenue and EPS numbers, you might think that the stock has a lot of room left to run to get back to that $40 to $50 range that they saw in 2020. However, over the last few years, Carnival Cruise has issued a lot of additional shares. We could see that back in 2020, they were sitting around 0.68 billion shares outstanding. However, that number over the last few years has grown all the way up to 1.4 billion shares outstanding. Where Royal Caribbean has only had to increase their shares outstanding slightly, we could see that they had around 0.2 billion shares outstanding in 2020, and they've raised that number all the way up to 0.28 billion shares outstanding in 2023. Personally, I don't like either of these companies. However, I think if you had to buy one of the two, I would prefer to buy Royal Caribbean over Carnival. The next stock we have up here is DraftKings, and DraftKings is up over 220% year to date. And DraftKings revenue is currently sitting at $3.3 billion, with their growth year over year coming in anywhere from 50 to 80% over the last four quarters. Right now, DraftKings is not profitable. However, if we look over the last two years, it does appear that the the company is getting closer and closer to profitability. With the company not being profitable, they currently do not have a forward P ratio. However, I think DraftKings over
over the course of the next one to two years could reach a state that they become profitable. And that would be very interesting because I do think that they have a dynamic that is very addictive to people going on and placing bets on their site. And that is something that over time I think is only going to get bigger and bigger. So this could be an interesting company, but personally, I'm not going to buy it now. Maybe in a couple years when we start seeing them get closer to profitability, that could be an interesting time to buy into the stock. The next company we have up here is Affirm Holdings. They do buy now, pay later. And we could see that this stock is up over 400% year to date. And even though those gains are very exciting, most people were probably buying into the stock in November of 2021. And if you did, you're still down 70% after the stock has ran up 400%. And Affirm's top line right now is sitting around $1.7 billion. And their growth over the last few quarters has started to turn around. They were dropping into single digit growth numbers. However, over the last couple of quarters, they have grown 22.5% and then 37.3%. And Affirm currently isn't profitable. And honestly, it doesn't look like they're going to be profitable anytime soon. They're still bringing in very negative EPS numbers year after year and quarter after quarter. With them not being profitable, they currently do not have a forward P ratio. And honestly, I'm not very interested in Affirm. I think there's a lot better buys out there that are profitable companies. Like PayPal has their own buy now, pay later payment structure. And that is a company that I am actually invested in. The next stock is XPO, which is up a little over 175% year to date. And in terms of their stock price, XPO has actually performed very well over the long term as well. Over the last five years, we could see that the stock is up over 350%. And this growth is actually a little bit surprising because their numbers have not been that great over the last few years. We could see that back in 2019, they were bringing in around $17.2 billion in trailing 12 month revenue. However, today that number has dropped all the way down to around $7.6 billion of revenue. And EPS numbers show a similar trend. We could see that back in 2019 and 2020, they were bringing in anywhere from $2.75 all the way up to $3.50. However, today that number has dropped all the way down to around 31 cents of trailing EPS. And right now the stock is trading at a forward P ratio of 28.41, which is the highest we have seen over the last year. So personally, XPO is not a buy for me. However, I think a lot of these freight companies over the next year could see a little bit of trouble. We have seen FedEx over the last couple of quarters report a few concerns about where the economy is headed over the next three to six months. And I think that that could affect some of their numbers in the short term. However, I do think in the long term, they do have additional struggles with Amazon coming in and taking a lot of market share in the industry. So those are 10 of the best performing stocks over the last year. Let me know if you own any of these companies down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your opinion on where these companies could be headed in the future and make sure to subscribe because tomorrow I'm thinking about doing a video on the worst performing stocks in the stock market for 2023. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.